So avid viewers will remember that when we put the coilovers in this car, they were not great. And that's the place way for me to put it. They're absolute garbage and don't fit the car. So I did what every 40 year old miserable bastard from Scotland does, and I moaned, and moaned and moaned and moaned, and then left negative feedback. And fun enough, the negative feedback seemed to work. Because shortly after all of that drama, I got these sent. A considerably shorter set of rear coilovers. Granted, they don't have the uh, cup at the top, but that's an easy thing to remedy. The question is, how much shorter are they? So it's only really been a month, but it'd be interesting to see if these coilover socks are worth their salt. Not bad. You see the problem, by the way. Right, quick fire, how to set up the height and coilovers. These designs are probably slightly different to what you might be used to. The cup here sets the height through this entire shock body, screwing in and out of it. The more you undo it, the higher it becomes. This guy sets the preload on the spring. So in actual fact, this doesn't actually dictate the height at all. So what I've done here, we'll set the preload on the spring so that it doesn't rattle about. Now, these are not progressive springs, they are just springs. So all I wanna do is take a bit of a nip on it so that they don't rattle. We do not need to compress a whole load of tension onto this. They are designed to sit and not move. Once that's done, you wanna lock these both in place using the bottom one to add tension to the top one. Don't be tempted to use the top one to tighten down on the bottom one or you're going to lose height from this. Tighten the bottom onto the top. Once you've got that, it's time to set your height. Now, obviously I have no idea what the height of these are gonna be, so I'm gonna have to put the wheel on first and take a guess. What I will do though, is make sure left and right are the same height before we begin. So for that, you need a measuring tape. But I'm an engineer, so I'm gonna use a steel rule instead. Measuring from a suitable reference point, so in this case, I'm gonna go from the bottom here down to the seat cup here. And in this instance, I am measuring, well, as near as damn it, 52 mil. I've already locked these two off. All I need to do, oh, wait a minute. This actually needs a bit less height. Moving the whole body down. I'm probably gonna regret this because I've got a funny feeling these will be far too bloody low. I'll tell you what I'm gonna do. 55, nice equal measurement. I'll bring the other side up by the same. Hmm, survey says. Well, you know, at least they're not too tall. I think we might need to add some threads on this. Similarly, I, yeah, can't get the ramp under it now. This this is going well. Got my height more or less set and I'm about to chuck the wheels back on. Before I do, I'm actually breaking off all of the non-geometry suspension mounts, i.e. not the camber bolts on the inside. And I'm loosening them off and lubricating them. And you'll note, not to show off or anything, but that's the lower big bolt that goes through the arm. So it's nice and loose now. I've not actually drawn it out yet, but I imagine with some stiff persuasion that'll come. I've done the same on the other side as well. The reason being, well, we'll get to the reason being, but I want to be able to disassemble all of this very soon. So now that I've got the back done, I'm gonna chuck the wheels back on here and get the front height to match. <laughs> Good, but is it just me or is the front still a bit higher than the back? Problem is, it's as high as I'm comfortable going on these. So we're gonna have to find the middle ground somehow. Back to the drawing board. 
So effective ruining of an MX-5 Part 2. This is a Torsen. The other one I bought, well, the other one I took out of the red one was a Fuji. So I decided it probably worth just, you know, getting another proper one rather than dicking about when I'm going to use for the low cost. So the Torsen's there, it's already polybushed. So I quickly do think we can chuck a diff in. Well, hopefully very quickly. yesterday so six days time we are going back to our deer and i'm going to take this guy because well it's rear wheel drive and probably will be a bit more interesting than the subaru honest to god i haven't touched a single thing in this car since putting it in the air i just thought i'll give it a wee back to front check over and see if i can identify any possible issues that might be making strange knocking noises The last time I worked on this was a long day. So, definition of project creep. I have put the car in the air because we were about to start doing the thing with the bars and the knicker elastic. So whilst up, I decided to have a look at the rear brakes. Now, the rear brakes are the small ones. So that's the disc that came off the car and that's the disc that came off the red one. So nice, obvious upgrade. And the upgrade is quite simple because all I actually need to do is put the carriers from the red one on and the calipers are the same, discs on, and away we go. So I took the disc off, and obviously the dirt guard needs to be chopped and mangled a wee bit just to get the bigger disc on. And then I noticed grindy clunky noises from here, so I'm gonna need a wheel bearing. So remember the alignment? That's suddenly a wee bit off. So wheel bearing, then discs, then alignment. And by the way, I've got our deer coming up very, very soon. But right, listen, do an auto test with a, bar, a bugger wheel bearing. It's the fast track to a disaster, so guaranteed we need to do this. <sighs> it would have been nice to not have to though. A few things to note here. One, I hate doing wheel bearings. Two, if you want to know how to do wheel bearings, watch literally any other project car I've done because they all end up needing wheel bearings. And three, I am really glad slanged this off a long time ago because it fell out. This actually doesn't feel that bad. <sighs> right, that actually isn't that bad. In fact, that wheel bearing's mint. My crunchy noises is the diff. Should I be worried? Yeah, probably. Lots of grease. Right, 
ADHD fixing of stuff out of the way. Here's an interesting upgrade. Will they look better than on a Spitfire though? shake down a car and that has been a pretty good shakedown. So my clicking noise I never got to the bottom of. I did worry it was the diff but clearly it's went through an entire auto test without exploding so it can't be the worst thing 
But what I have managed to do off the back of that is give it a proper to-do list. Because whilst we've done the stagey one part, there are many more improvements we can make. Now in the next episode when we're touching this, we're going to start getting some of those improvements underway. But for the moment, it's time for us to wrap up. We have completed a decent built daily, I think. It's gone really well. It's handled motorsport and not died. What more can you possibly ask for? One thing I need to do, massive thanks to Scottish Sporting Car Club for hosting. It is a proper grassroots motorsport. If you fancy it and you like the look of it, go and have a look at Facebook, whatever, get on it because tremendous fun can be had for an absolute pittance. I think a whole year's worth of activity equates to like one track day at Knock Hill. It's, it's a no-brainer, honestly. And it's a great community. Apart from that, Massive thanks to all the Patreons running up the side of the screen. I couldn't do it without you guys' support either. And it's been a long journey. And honestly, I really do appreciate everyone who's jumped on from the start or jumped on recently. It does totally allow this whole nonsense to happen. Last of all, if you just found this, thanks for joining. Hope you stay around for more. Like, subscribe, bell, because it's only really grow. And until next weekend, guys, drive safe.